Hey YouTube, we're back with an unplanned project today. I started out this morning, I was going to go pick up a skid steer. We had some drainage, a drainage project we were going to work on around the goat barn, but this truck had other ideas. I started it up this morning and zero oil pressure is what I had. So I started out with the, the cheapest, easiest fix. I went and got a sending unit, put it on. No good. Uh, some of these trucks have a screen underneath the sending unit. Mine doesn't have one, so that wasn't the issue. Um, these trucks also sometimes have gauge clusters. Some of the gauges go bad on them occasionally, so hoping that maybe that's what, that, what was going on. I went and got a manual gauge, and we hooked it to the front of the engine. So the oil sending unit, if that's not too bright there, is right back behind that fuel line back there by the firewall and then there's an oil gallery port uh, if you look right back here behind the, the power steering pump you can't see it from the top side but there's an M16 oil port down there that I tapped into with a pressure gauge got zero pressure down there so that pretty much means uh, we're not getting anything out of the pump after doing some research there are a couple of different things that happen to these occasionally. There's a oil ring or O-ring on the oil pickup tube that goes bad sometimes. So the pump will draw air and won't pump any oil. And then also there's just the, the high pressure relief on the oil pump can go bad and stick sometimes and dump all your pressure. I'm not sure. We'll see. There's, there's two different ways to get to it depending upon which one of those it is. So we're tearing into it. We'll go into the truck here and I'll show you what we've got done so far. So I've gotten started underneath the truck here and it's going to be kind of hard to get this on camera so that it makes sense. But uh, this truck is a four wheel drive. So I've got the uh, front differential here and you can see the oil pan. The oil pan's got to come off obviously to work on this oil pickup tube. Um, so the very first step is to get this front differential out. So I've got the the motor unhooked, the electric motor here. I've got the CV axles unbolted, if you can see that there. Um, and then there's a cross brace that goes from over here and then bolts up here. I've got that removed and then of course the drive shaft is unbolted so right now it's just hanging in there by a couple bolts everything should be loose don't forget there's also a couple of uh, clips holding wires the wire that goes to this uh, on the top of there so I've got got those unhooked we're gonna get the jack up under this and get those bolts out and see if we can get this down without dropping it on my head Okay, so I don't know how much of that actually came through on the camera, but what I was fighting was this mount here, and then, so, the goal was, oh, I'm not, there we go, the goal was to kind of pivot the front end around this mount, but the front end wouldn't swing, 
because it was hitting this drag link here. So what I ended up having to do was take the power steering sector. Oh, there we go. I'm getting shadows and stuff all over the place. But anyway, I took the bolts out of this power steering gearbox that bolted it to the frame. And then the what I was fighting initially was I had that done and I could pry this drag link and everything forward but I couldn't go far enough and ended up the trick being is I had the wheels turned all the way to the left so this uh, pitman arm was all the way that way well that was hitting against this brace here and it wouldn't let me pry this back quite far enough so what I ended up having to do is set the wheels straight with the steering wheel and then that was that was able to allow me to pry this far enough forward that the ear on the front of that uh, differential could swing past and then it would go ahead and come out that was quite the chore fighting that until I got that so uh, next step then I'll get everything off the outside of this oil pan and see where we're at with that this is the pickup tube out now um, it's pretty straightforward taking the oil pan off was was fairly easy there's just a few wire clips on the side and a bunch of 10 millimeter hex head bolts so this is the o-ring that everybody says could be bad and i suppose there's a possibility but looking at this one uh it looks pretty good like i can't find anything wrong with it um, and it fit in there nice and tight it doesn't seem to be too swelled up or anything so I'm sure uh, that there could be something wrong with it maybe but if if I hadn't read online about that o-ring being a problem um, I wouldn't even look at this one like I wouldn't worry about this one if I was short on parts I might even reuse it but I'm not so we're not going to but that's with that then uh, it looks like we need to keep going farther I got a, a new oil pump last night, so we're going to tear into the front side and see if we can see anything there and probably replace this pump. So we're starting up top now, but I wanted to take it a second to show you that working on these trucks, especially one jacked up in the air like this, that little platform is one of the handiest things. It's so nice. So I can stand up there. I've got a little walkway. I don't have to be kneeling on the bumper or anything so if you've got one keep that in mind um, we've got this started coming apart um, I've got the this top radiator shroud off of course the tubing that goes over to the air filter from the throttle body and then this thing has got apparently a monster of a water pump I've never never really been into an LS engine much but uh, that water pump goes on for days uh, and apparently all of the hoses are connected to it the heater hoses the upper and lower radiator hoses but as you see they've got those spring clamps and I was just going to show you something here I've got a tool specifically for those spring hose clamps a lot of people know about these most professional mechanics have them um, but they make dealing with those hose clamps so much easier and they're like I think $14 on Amazon or something so get you a, a pair of these um, they make life way easier. I'll show you how they work here. So, the beauty of these is we've just got that little, those little fingers there. And you take them down, and since this is on a cable, it's a lot easier. You hook it on there and squeeze. And then the handles lock. So I'm not holding anything any of this pressure by hand and you slide that back and then I'll see if I can show you so that's locked and then I hit that if I can kind of hold them together maybe squeeze that together and it lets go and you can twist these around and bend them around in places where you'd be pretty hard pressed to get a pair of regular pliers or water pump pliers or something to squeeze them all the hoses are off as you can see 
I made a complete and absolute mess of that. I did not drain the radiator first. I thought I would just pull the hose off and stick it in a bucket. Well, that worked for the lower radiator hose. And then the heater hoses gushed a bunch out. The water pump, a bunch came out of it. And some came out the top hose. So I wasn't able to catch all of it. Uh, oh, well, I guess I'll just have to clean it up. I'm down to the last bolt now. Let's see if I can get you guys set up here. I'm down to the last bolt now, so we'll see if we can get this water pump up and out of here. There goes more antifreeze all over the floor. All right, we are a few steps ahead now. So we got the uh, air conditioning belt off. I went ahead and took out several of the timing cover bolts here uh, while the air compressor was running to take out the crank bolt. So the crank bolt's a 24 millimeter and an impact is pretty much a must. Um, and then, so going to pull the harmonic balancer off or what well, really on this engine is just a crank pulley. Um, a three jaw puller is what you use. I was already with a harmonic balancer puller, but that is not the case. There are no threaded holes in here. So, but they do have little pads specifically for a three jaw puller. So this is working pretty well. It's, I've got it broke loose. It took uh, some pressure on it to get it to finally move. What I did to, to make sure I didn't mess up the threads in the end of the crank is the crank bolt. I went ahead and threaded it back in a few threads. So uh, my puller rod is just going on the head of that. So it's backed out a little way so it can slide off here in a minute. I may have to adjust that. But we'll get this off and then see what it looks like under the timing cover. The crank pulley came off pretty good. I did have to take the bolt. I ran out of threads on the bolt. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't get the pulley all the way off with the bolt still threaded in the crank. So after a little while, I had to take the bolt out, and then I just found an old junk socket that would fit in there uh, that was smaller than the diameter of the crank, and it tore up the Taiwan socket that I used, but it worked. So now we'll see if we can get this cover off. I've just got a couple bolts holding it on still. Four bolts.
Okay, let's see if we can get this part and see if there's anything wrong with it. Well, I was able to find the problem, luckily. Um, so I'll show you kind of how, what's going on here. So this is what they call a gerotor pump. And this is the inlet. That's where the, the tube would have gone in or did go in. Oh. Okay, so the, the oil comes in here. And you can see my finger on the other side of those gears. And as this spins, you watch the void here. So say that was full of oil, and as this spins around, you can see that gap start to get smaller as the as it comes around and the tooth fills in there. So you see how small that is. And <clears throat> imagine this being covered on the front. So it's going to push the oil out the back. And if I can slide these out real easy here. So from the inlet here, and then as that pocket was getting smaller, it comes over here, and this is the outlet. So if you can see through that hole, this, that's the outlet where it goes into the block. So um, what's going on, or what, what happened with this one, is this, you can see this shiny spot here, that's a pressure relief valve. And basically what that is, is that's a, a piston and then there's a spring in behind it, and then this cap goes on uh, on the end. And if you look down this hole, so this is the outlet. If you can see, there's a little hole right here uh, that's open to that passageway. And that's where the top of that piston should be. So that as pressure gets high in here, it will the pressure will push on this piston. It will compress the spring. And then you can't see it very good here. Maybe I'll turn the light on. Okay. And as this piston comes down, the oil can come from that passage back around, and this opens up to the inlet again. So basically the pump would this just be circulating the fluid. Well, what I was able to find, if you can see, that piston is back. And it's not moving forward. See that gap there? And that would be enough to drop the pressure by quite a bit. I assume there's probably something in there. I may take it apart here and see what's holding it back. But that is definitely the problem. I guess it's time to start reassembling now. So I got all... The gaskets cleaned up and everything. Uh, I hosed this all down with brake clean to clean these off and kind of dried out the timing set. So I did go ahead and I got some some Lucas oil oil stabilizer. Went ahead and poured that over the uh, timing chain. Put a little bit on this drive hub here, and then I also put just a little bit in the inlet of the oil pump and spun it around just to make sure we don't have anything. Running dry whenever we start up. So, get this guy put in. Next, the timing cover. A new seal, a new gasket. These bolts will only go in finger tight until we get the crank pulley back on because that's what it uses to center the timing cover. We've got the uh, harmonic balancer crank pulley on uh, That proved to be a little difficult. I went and got a the rental tool the harmonic balancer installer from O'Reilly's and That apparently will not work on this by the time this gets threaded in uh, This will thread all the way into the crank until the tip of This adapter is past flush with the end of the crank. Well, 
to get the threaded rod on the outside of this, it goes down to here. So you would have had to cut that threaded rod off. Uh, basically all that to say is I had to rig something up because I couldn't start it with the crank bolt either. So I ended up using this conglomeration, the socket and a few washers and that was able to get me started. I went a little ways until I could catch plenty of threads with the crank bolt and then went the rest of the way with the crank bolt. I made sure to uh, grease up the threads on that crank bolt to make sure we didn't gall any threads. It made me kind of nervous, but uh, we made it. The One of the torque sequences on that crank bolt is 240 pounds. So as I was pulling this on, I set my torque wrench to 150 foot pounds and just to make sure that I wasn't going to over torque the bolt, bolt and mess up the threads. And we didn't get there until we got right here to the end. So uh, that all panned out well, but I would have liked to use a an installer like this one. So now that that's on there, we can tighten the timing cover bolts. So you're supposed to put this on so the seal centers around the, the crank pulley. And then this can rotate this back and forth this way some. So you go underneath and make sure it's flush with the bottom of the rails on the bottom of the engine. And then, so now we're gonna very carefully snug this up so that it doesn't move. And then these will get torqued and we'll probably move down underneath after this. Next we'll put on the new pickup tube. Watch on this. Um, apparently there's different O-rings for different types of pickup tubes. The kit that I bought had a little flyer in there that explained some of that. This one, this pump, I bought this one with a new pickup tube and it came with an O-ring already on it. So of course I'm just going to use that. And I put a little bit of uh, Lucas on the O-ring to help help it go in there. Right in like that. Got the oil pump and everything buttoned up on the bottom side, so now we're going to go ahead and put the top side together. I haven't put the uh, differential or anything back underneath yet. Um, I'm going to get the engine put back together so we can start it and make sure everything's all good to go. I don't see why it wouldn't be, but we're going to do that first, just in case. Okay, moment of truth right here. I've got the engine all put back together, uh, water pump and everything on, topped it off with new oil, and we're full of antifreeze. I've not put the front end by end back yet, but uh, we'll see what happens here and make sure we're good to go to do that. So. There we go. It took long enough. I'm glad to see that. Alright, I guess I'm going to get to work then putting the differential back in. Uh, I probably won't worry about showing it to you guys unless there's something crazy happens. Uh, if you liked what you saw, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.